And as early voting gets underway in Georgia, I want to bring in Tia Mitchell, D.C.-based correspondent for the Atlanta Journal Constitution. Tia, great to have you. You know, Georgia's Republican Governor Brian Kemp will debate Democrat Stacey Abrams tonight. We've been talking a lot about this just ahead of their rematch next month. What are you going to be watching for tonight? Well, I'll be watching, number one, Brian Kemp, a lot of the polls show him either slightly ahead or pretty significantly ahead of Stacey Abrams outside of the margin of error. Stacey Abrams is going to try to make a case as to why she believes Georgians should ditch the incumbent and support her. And how is she going to do that? How, how much is she going to go on the attack? She's going to try to paint Governor Kemp as too conservative, too far right. Um, and then I think Kemp, on the other hand, is going to try to paint Abrams as the one who's out of touch and say, you know, she's funded by West Coast elite and she's not in touch with Georgians. So it's going to be interesting to see which one of them is more apt, uh, a little bit more successful at driving that message home tonight. So, Tia, as you know, in 2018, Abrams lost to Kemp by fewer than 55,000 votes. You know, fast forward to today, right? 1.6 million new voters have registered since then. Pretty remarkable. And, of course, Joe Biden won Georgia in 2020. So what do you think is so different or could be different this time around? Well, there are two things. Number one, it's not an open seat. There's an incumbent in the race. There's Brian Kemp, and voters in Georgia have almost four years of Brian Kemp to judge him on. And that makes it harder to create a narrative around it because he can create his own narrative based on his record. Um, also, I think for Stacey Abrams, four years ago, she was um, you know, a very popular, um, instilled a lot of hope and, and energy. And it's just hard to recreate that because now voters know her as well. She's not this newcomer firebrand who everybody's so excited by she's and it, it's not that i think that you know people have turned on her it's just she's not the new fresh thing now so the excitement factor isn't as strong as it was four years ago i think both of those things work against stacy abrams but again what she's trying to do is create an alternative for georgians to say here's what i would do as governor i can make the state even better but again, that's just hard in any race, regardless of the candidates, it's hard to unseat an incumbent. All right, you mentioned excitement factor. Uh, I've got to talk to you about Herschel Walker uh, debating Warnock on Friday, but was a no-show last night. What's your take on that? What happened? Yeah, so, and I want to make sure, that for those who aren't aware, the, the debate last night, the Atlanta Press Club, is the higher profile debate. It's the debate series that has been around for a long time and major candidates. If they're going to do a debate, usually the Atlanta Press Club debate is the one they do. Herschel Walker would never commit to the debate. So ultimately, the one debate that both he and Reverend Warnock agreed to do was the um, other debate down in Savannah on Friday. And, you know, it went the way it went. I think Herschel Walker exceeded the admittedly low expectations that people had for him for the debate. But it still is notable that the big one, the one that doesn't have a studio audience, the one that's a little bit more, um, is considered a little bit more um, judicious about the format and a little bit more serious, so to speak, that's the one he chose not to do. And that allowed Senator Warnock to take advantage of it and, and to not only go on the attack, but to repeatedly remind viewers, Herschel Walker didn't show up to debate me. And what do you think that says about Herschel Walker as a candidate, as a man, a confidence factor here or lack thereof? Yeah, I think Herschel Walker's campaign was never enthusiastic about debating Raphael Warnock. Um, he did not debate at all during the primary. And um, I think they knew that during the general election, he would need to do at least one to avoid that becoming a huge issue. Um, but I think they re they realized that probably more than one would just create more opportunities for gaffes, misstatements, um, mistruths to go viral the way, you know, he had several problematic moments during Friday's debate, but only one has truly gone viral. If he had done another debate, there would have been more opportunities. And I think they didn't want to risk that. 
Well, speaking about what went viral, you've got to tell me what you thought about him flashing that fake police badge. Yeah, and that's an honorary badge. That does not mean that he has any training or rights or responsibilities in law enforcement, and he continues to misstate that. Tia Mitchell with the AJC. Used to live and work there in Atlanta. Great newspaper. Uh, appreciate you being with us. Thanks so much, Tia. Thank you. And for more information on the midterms and, of course, all things politics related, you can point your phone's camera at the QR code, QR code rather, there in the lower right hand corner of your screen and find the latest there. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.